Hey folks, before I uh, do a little PTC, check what's coming out from behind this. Uh... Here we go. Nice. Oh, right on cues, the helicopter. It's Farnborough time. Qatar's retro jet for anybody who doesn't know. Welcome everybody. Hope you're doing well. Let me just see if I can uh, fire up the uh, thing function. See what happens with the modem, yeah? I guess that's something new. <laughs> Could be the annual championships, plane spitting. I'm sure, there's a, I'm sure there's a sport in there somewhere. Hi, welcome to the National Plane Spitting Championships. The winners of this round will go through to the quarterfinals of the International Plane Spitting Cup. Anyway, um, right. That's where we are, folks. Right there, right there. People bathing out on the, um, see if we can get a wave from anyone. Is anyone gonna give us a wave over there? I don't wanna go too close just because uh, I don't wanna sort of like, you know, privacy and all that, but uh, enjoying uh, enjoying themselves having a aperitif. Uh, now, um, just before this one comes in, just a quick hello. Uh, some of you may notice that me, <laughs> It's all BEA parked up in a thing from. Who's that? Uh, welcome everybody. Um, I'm a bit... Uh, when I got back from New York, I was all right in the morning. And then as the day went on, I, what time did I arrive, Julie? About... About 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock I got home by the time I cleared. Interestingly enough, customs and baggage control straight through. It is just one of those things, folks, that is, is a... Is a bit of a uh, oh look ITA. Saw their A350 in New York, folks. What a great couple of days that was in New York at JFK. I'm pretty sure, uh, based on the views that we have. That members have watched it at least uh, at least once or maybe even twice. Is that uh, Air Baltic's little CS <laughs> A220? Sorry, sorry, Airbus. It's your fault for buying the company. Um, right, just uh, so yeah, I got back um, got back from from um, from the terminal around about midday, eleven o'clock midday. Felt fine. By the afternoon, sort of started feeling a little bit sort of like, hello, what's going on here then? A little bit of a, huh, you know. Um, and then uh, that night, uh, had a bit of bed sweats and all that kind of thing. I know, sorry if you're eating your dinner. <laughs> it's horrible. And, um, and yeah, uh, had a meeting uh, on Tuesday, yesterday, a Zoomy meeting with, uh, with the folks from Embraer and basically lost my voice. Uh, it kind of came back. I feel a lot better today. Um, uh, it, yesterday, all day was a little bit uh, 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 and all that, um, but it all worked out. It's, 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 it's getting better. I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. Voice is still a bit dodgy, but um, feeling good in myself. And to be honest with you, rather than sitting at home, sort of like just doing boring stuff, I thought, well, let's come out here and at least give you uh, give you guys a midweek show of some sort. Um, so here we are, and uh, a very warm welcome. Hope you're doing well. And um, we are here mainly to give you an update on what's happening with Farnborough. Um, now, we originally uh, talked about going out there for um, Thursday and Friday to, uh, to uh, catch aircraft arriving. 777X uh, or 779, 
as I believe uh, Boeing would prefer it to be called, 779 and 737-10 um, have arrived at Farnborough. A uh, bit of a shame we missed it, would have liked to have caught that for you. However, we will be catching them going out, so we will get them firing up those big GEs, man. And not only that, but between all of that, we're going to be going up close and personal with that 777-900. Um, it's just going to be fantastic. As well as that, um, we've got the Airbus A350-900 displaying. I'm not sure if she's going to be on static. I will check because I've got the full list of what's coming next um, uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, four days of, of air displays and um, general, uh, so if, if you miss it on one day, you can get it on the next day um, and there's different, even though there's a pattern uh, every day, there are additional stuff that's coming in. There's quite a few fly pasts as well. I'm gonna read all this out when we get back to the action here. Um, but bottom line is, we're gonna do Saturday um, this is this is my proposal that I've put into the folks at Farnborough. Still waiting for the official confirmation. Uh, you've got to understand, folks, that these guys are right up against it like that with regards to uh, the administrative stuff that they have to take care of. Um, we are just a little tiny piece in that in that pond. However, it will become a massive piece once we go live there, um, and they will no doubt appreciate that. However, um, uh, understandably, they're very difficult to get hold of, very difficult to get to, 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 to liaise with um, because they're so busy, and I fully understand that. Um, but so, so based on everything that we've now got on the schedule, on the flying schedule, display schedule, as well as what's on static, um, as well as uh, some meetings that I have planned, some walkthroughs with you guys, especially with Embraer as well. Got some very exciting stuff and uh, interesting stuff to bring you from Embraer. They've, they really have uh, sort of like launched this whole new side of Embraer, which is very interesting to see. And I, I'd imagine that many other uh, manufacturers will follow suit in this whole sort of like, you know, uh, hybrid era that we're looking at. Um, so, the plan is on Saturday, not sure exactly what time yet, and we'll let you know, of course, don't forget, download the app or uh, subscribe to YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, folks, only because you get your notifications from there as well. Uh, from there and, as, of course, as well as um, on, um, on our app. But on Saturday, the plan is to do a, um, a show from there, which would be a bit like Brundle's uh, Pit Walk, going through uh, the whole display area in terms of the, the static displays, talking to a few people there, catching some of the aircraft, some of the remaining aircraft that are statically going to be displaying. Uh, they, some of those will be arriving on Saturday as well. We're not sure which, but we will get to see that 777, uh, 777 uh, sorry, the, the, the 779 and the uh, 73710 uh, statically displayed on the ground and then I know we saw it in Seattle, but we will get an unbelievable up close shot of that enormous engine. Um, so no flying displays on Saturday. However, they will be, um, um, I have no doubt there will be some aircraft movements and some very interesting stuff that we can walk around um, and see who's displaying what in their chalets and all that kind of thing. Because remember that um, this is not an official uh, uh, air show uh, a public uh, uh, um, uh, air show, so to speak. It's more um, for the corporate side. It's for it's more for um, a a a aviation um, businesses to to um, to show their wares and what they're um, what they're proposing for the future as well. Um, and that will know that will then seep out into the uh, into the social medias. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of journalists there so look out on social medias as well but we will be doing a live walk around a hide a scooter um she said do you want a um do you, uh, i said what does it come with because i wanted a lock on it you see so we just get this little uh i've got to borrow a lock as well as the thing off the pedal. Very, very, very calm conditions, as you can appreciate. Bleeding hot as well, uh, boiling hot, I've got to say. I'm actually sweating. I've got sweat running down my thing fong. <laughs> so, um, 
where was I? Yeah, I've rented a scooter. Um, I said, what comes with it? Because I wanted a, a, a lock. And she said, well, it comes with the uh, delivery box on the on the back and the, and the heated muffs. I'm like, well, for a start, I'm not delivering pizzas. And secondly, I'm not going to need the muffs, OK? Because I think it's going to be a little bit warm out there. Um, so I've got the scooter. Um, and we will be attaching uh, one of these uh, clamps to the front of the scooter as well. So I'll be able to do scooter cam. Uh, as well as then switching to this camera here, which is my mobile unit. Another Neo. Is my voice slowly going, Jelly, or is it all right at the moment? People picking it up all right? Quite, uh, it seems to be quite empty over here. However, you need to appreciate that now some of the aircraft that will have been parked over here are now over at T4. Um, oh, hello. However, I still think it's a little bit... Ah, oh, okay. Chilly, chilly, uh, just hang up. I'm gonna call you off the other, off the other, off the comms phone, just hang up. Always interesting to watch those turbo props uh, going to reverse. Interesting, another thing that uh, we're going to be doing with Embraer. Uh, stand by. funky shot I just missed there was it or not absolutely awesome show in New York man. absolutely awesome um, we of course uh, oh hello United 767 on the push we of course um, planned differently but uh, What, what, what? I'm intrigued to talk with Embraer at some length. Um, obviously I don't want to bore you guys when we're there, but they've got some very interesting concept stuff that uh, is probably about three years away from flying. And I know uh, 
one in particular person who's going to be very interested to see this thing. It's no secret. It's no secret at all. It's um, it's online for everybody to see. Um, it is the. Uh, let's just have a little look here. We have got quite a big schedule um, with uh, with Farnborough in terms of what's flying and what's uh, on static. The plan is, like I said, is to um, is to uh, get everything done uh, in terms of the static walkthroughs and all that kind of stuff uh, on the Saturday, so that I can con con as I can solely concentrate on um, on the. Uh, on the displays uh, during the weekdays. Now, the great thing is that um, I will give you a plan. We will give you a plan on what is booked in to fly every day. We can update that on the. Uh, we can do a, uh, we can do a final update on the app, actually. Okay, so we're going to create a Farnborough update on the app, folks. Firing up his prats. Sorry, folks. 319's a ten a penny, but 767's not rare. But oh, we've got a triple inbound. Here we go. Yeah, Jilly. Uh, I tell you what. I tell you what. You might want to do, folks, is search. Let's, let's crash the website. Let's do it when there's a load of people watching, Jill. Let's see if we can crash Embraer's website. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if there is, an, uh, there is a link directly to that on their website. I'm sure there will be. You might need to do a bit of research on it. Hold on, I'll tell you. Stick it. Oh, nice. Had a great flight with Virgin once again, as I always do, man. Um, particularly the uh, the return flight. We had some serious uh, tailwinds, uh, which got us in... Um, well, I think it was well on schedule, I, I believe. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's um, yes, yes. Oh, who the hell's that? And it's on their website. There's a link to their website, is it? Don't put it up yet. Oh, okay. It, it, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh dear, really? Some of the pictures I've seen of it are, are absolutely unbelievable, man. I, f I was hoping you might get quite excited about it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, let's crash it, man. Let's crash it. Beautiful, man. Saw the Asiana 350 in uh, at JFK, didn't we? Nice. Go on, sir. And they've got the uh, they've got the can they've got the cockpit of it there, mate. They've got a mock up of the cockpit there. Yeah. So we will be. Uh... <laughs> Ricky. Here, Ricky. 
Yeah, air displays start on Monday through Friday. So we're going to be there for five days. Did I say four days earlier on? I did say four days earlier on. Oh, listen to that. Just about here, uh. Oh, hello. Here comes your E2. And it was a launch customer. Hey, folks. Another thing that we're going to be showcasing there. Get this. The E195 E2. Profitant here. It's got its own funky uh, livery. Um, and the Shark. The new 190 Shark will be there as well. Um, so lots of things happening with Embraer, of course. Uh, they're, 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 they're naming it uh, Fly the Future. Um, yeah, so that, the turboprop, which is a bit like, uh, it's a bit like an E2 jet, but with horizontally mounted turboprops at the back of the aircraft. Um, that's 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 uh, part of their future plan. Of course, sustainable aviation fuel. They've already run a one one ninety five, I believe it was, one ninety or one ninety five on full SAF. Um, SAF being Sierra Alpha Foxtrot sustainable aviation fuel. Um, and now, of course, they have the uh, E one nine five freighter as well. So these guys are really going leaps and bounds um, with their production and future plans and of course one of my big questions to the folks at Embraer will be whether or not they will be able to challenge um, the 321 XLR, the long range uh, variant of the 321, uh, which is literally a case of just adding fuel tanks. So you don't, I mean, you obviously have to change certain design dynamics in order to fit the extra fuel tanks, you know. Um, and I believe that is just a case of strengthening the fuselage in certain places. Whether you can additionally fit fuel tanks in the tailplane or, uh, or in the wings, I don't know. That's something that I'd like to discuss with them, but I have no doubt that they're probably considering it because at this time, at this point in time, um, I believe that the 321 XLR is Airbus's main um, single aisle jet that they're planning to or are having as a, a long, ultra long range, well, not ultra long range, but a long range jet that can fly transatlantic or long haul routes. Crazy to think that. I mean, if they could do it to a 318 with British Airways back in the day with Airbus, I'm sure that they can do it with a, with a you know, um, a similar aircraft. It's just all about fitting those long range tanks. Look. Absolutely fantastic to see Etihad's um, A350-1000 uh, JFK. Saw so much cool stuff at JFK, folks. Lots of jumbos and um, multiple, multiple direction um, runway operations uh, with them coming past us, with them going banking over the top of us, um, landing towards us. Um, in other directions as well, past Manhattan, where they turn in over Manhattan. Absolutely fantastic. Virgin 787. Yeah, guys did a great job. Lovely crew, I've got to say.
Simon. Really? You serious? Oh my good gold. Well then in the Oh for gold's sake, mate. I'll have to well, I mean then then somebody will buy it as a, a cargo hub, surely. Someone will uh, yeah, somebody will oh, oh, somebody will do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, lots of interesting stuff coming from Embraer regarding their uh, electric drone style flying aircraft. And this is something that um, we're going to put the link up now, folks. Go and check it out. It is absolutely awesome. Um, doesn't affect us, fortunately, because it is a taxi service that you would maybe get from London Heathrow to your hotel uh, in the middle of London. And then maybe uh, from the middle of London, uh, from your hotel to the Farnborough Air Show, and that's the sort of like mock up that they're going to be running. Uh, but go and check out this uh, funky air aircraft, which is electric power, and they reckon about three years before that thing's flying. Well, not before, should be flying within three weeks, uh, three, three years, three weeks. I tell you, Uber will be straight on the case for that. Oh man, that was smooth. That was smooth. Well, it does, it, does, it does make you wonder whether or not they'd be able to sort of like hover over the house and parachute your shopping down. But I don't know, man. I mean, if it's in windy conditions, no, it's not going to work, man. Not going to work. No. No. No, there's too much demand for that kind of thing in there. Yeah, what a fantastic uh, couple of days in. We'll definitely go back. And the irony, of course, is that we were thinking about we might go to the TWA Hotel as another option was a Terminal 5 parking lot on top of the roof, um, which when I got up there, I'll be honest with you, when I went up there and did the recce, it was like, oh, I don't think I like this. Could see very little. Uh, could see a little bit of movement on the aprons, but other than that, could see no runway action you couldn't see anything happening um, and I, I basically thought well this is all about um, position 13 on spot guide by the way if you're uh, if you're considering going out there and doing it you will need a vehicle to get out there I have to say oh this is nice Aer Lingus retrojet Easy. Should polish those engines, mate. Polish the under underside as well. That would look awesome, wouldn't it? Guessing when that was a retro jet, the original jets. Were they polished? Yes, yeah. yeah. No, it's talking about now and it's like it's fine man it's fine um what's it talking about uh, yeah i did see that over europe actually that china eastern uh, 350. okay so this is the first time we caught this china eastern 350. normally it's their 737 isn't it <laughs> yeah, there we go, rap. Jess White, Jerry, stop talking, Chris. Come on, not a chance. I'll keep going until there's uh, until it's gone full Frank Butcher style. Now listen. John 747. Yeah, we did look at hiring a boat, didn't we? It was what was it, sixteen hundred pound an hour. Or with a captain, with a captain. Hello there. If we had loads of money, we'd do it just for a laugh, I think. <laughs> loads of money. No, we can't go on a jet ski, Jenny, even though I'd like to go on a jet ski to film him, but it's just not going to happen, is it? Hey, everybody. <laughs> 
I've just got me to the There's a set for me. It's like for God's sake. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh my god, it's gonna crash. <laughs> Ian Roper, A3, uh, 350941 Air China. Uh, Where's Ian next? Uh, Richard Mortara, yeah, normally China Eastern 7. 3 7. <laughs> Jet ski cam, just covered in water permanently. What's that, Jilly? Yeah, trouble is, Jilly, mate. There's nothing we'd be able to do to influence it whatsoever. And trust me, if there's a property development company that's uh, offering them a shed load of money, to the private landowners, you haven't got a chance. Unless, unless someone like DHL comes in there and says, right, we'll buy it for a couple of times what the, um, you know, I mean, that would be the only other op viable option, wouldn't it? No, 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 what I'm saying is, yeah, 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 yeah. Hodgie, Hodgie. Hodgie, are we going to see a China Eaton? Oh. Is this a new airline from the very, very rich school, China Eaton? <laughs> very funny. Cyberfly in perfect conditions for butter landings, even though it will melt. Um, watch that coming across the Atlantic. Well, uh, sorry, across the Atlantic. Coming up from um, from uh, Mauritius, which was uh, which the um, it's right next to. Uh, didn't realise where it was to be perfectly honest with you. Now I do. It's next to Cyprus. Isn't it? <laughs> That's only because I saw it on the map. I think, isn't it? Isn't it Mauritius? Yeah. The, the, uh, it's come from, no, 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 don't, don't, don't. <coughs> but it's come from Porto something or other, didn't it? Didn't it come from Porto? And that's the Seychelles, is it the Seychelles or the, no, no, the, oh, for God's sake, stop it. Stop it while you're, while you're ahead, mate. Uh, H-A-H, ha, -H is, does he want to come out? Do you want to come out, mate? Do you want to come out? You're coming out. Oh, don't want to come out, it's too hot. Come on, come on. Right, all right, we'll leave you then. <laughs> uh, you see, when you're feeling when you're feeling down and all that stuff of the music, or ill or whatever, watch Big Jet TV because you, or do Big Jet TV because at least it makes you feel a little bit better, or a bit stupider, should I say? There we go, Ben Brown, Air Mauritius fly from Port Louis. Yeah. In Mauritius. No man. Did I did I zoom in in the wrong place? Because it looked like it was a straight line all the way down and to the right of Cyprus, wasn't it? Oh, hold on a minute. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I think. No. Oh, I think I've definitely... I, I took the wrong route, didn't I? Hold on a minute. No, somebody said, Hodgie, somebody said, Miss Tip, 
Mistyped it, 737, mate. That's why I was confused and why I would say, why are we going to, you know, it's the China Eastern 737. No, no, he said, normally we see their 737, and I was like, question mark. No, of course we don't. We see their 777, isn't it? The uh, China Eastern, we more see more than, uh, than anything else. Um, anyway. Right at the get-go, folks, right at the beginning of the show, watch the, uh, roll it back and watch the Qatar um, retro jet going out. What's this? What's all this? Covid brain. Oh. Oh. Yeah, but you don't get more stupid, do you? You don't... I can do, uh, I can do, I can do, uh, cruises, Jilly. Hey! Are we... Oh, for God's sake, Oji, oh, I said 737 because somebody else said 737 as a mistake. And I was reading out their comments. Scroll back, scroll back, scroll back. God's sake. Straight down the middle, landed it straight down the Are you talking about the United 767? That one there had an RTO, did it? You're joking, man. Oh my word, wow, really? No, wow. Oh man. To the right of Cyprus. Oh my goodness me. And I did think why would they need three fifties to fly all the way? Just fly that distance, man. Oh I don't know. I don't know, man. I'll put it down to the COVID. But I haven't got COVID, I tested, didn't I? So I was negatory. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I think it's just lurgy or some sort of like 24-hour flu or something. Because it's definitely better today than it was yesterday. It's just a voice, isn't it, talking... Uh, no, a proper one. A legit one. This is nice, isn't it? This is very nice. Yeah. Now also, folks,
our departure, our, our departure out of Heathrow was flat out, man. Oh, okay. Peter Graham, ATR. Good evening to you, sir. ATR 42500. Uh, five minutes out. That is is that yeah forty two five hundred forty two five hundred. Wow. Michael Petty is a new member. Welcome, Michael. Forgive my uh, my voice. Uh, let me just see what the uh, oh, it's going to London City, is it? Oh, okay. Just trying to find this uh, this note that I did have. Now I don't have, which I'm a little bit. Swiss 220. Size of the overhead bins in these new modern um, single aisle jets is so impressive, man. I mean, not as impressive as the, uh, the A350. Um, the likes of the A350 and the Dreamliner. I'm amazed how the designers, the, in, the, the cabin designers have managed to put in overhead bins, which I'm going to be honest with you, if you were to take your average uh, wheelie bin that you use for your trash and all that, put that on its side, that's about how big the overhead uh, sto stowage bins are um, on the A350. Just absolutely incredible. Yeah, shame that that's gone, isn't it? Oh, is that a jet coming? Is that a four engine coming towards me from the from the uh, from the east, Jilly? I'm seeing a I'm just seeing a trail that's. That's one we missed at New York, wasn't it? Austrian seven was it seven sixty seven or their triple seven? Remember when I went out when I when I went and checked out this position out. I think I might have missed this. From the west, sorry. No, from the east, sorry, sorry, from the east, yeah. Well it's the 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 the, 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 the water vapour trail has now turned in it's gone so i'm just no no i'm not able to see it anymore it's gone 
So it's it's vaporized. Okay, well we ain't got that then. Uh, by the way, welcome all our new members uh, who've signed up. Uh, Mark B, welcome to Premium. Good to see you here, Mark. Good to see all our other new members. Um, if you're new, come in, say hello, get involved in the chat. Um, open your flight radar apps. If you, I don't know if you've got your flight radar apps, or um, but it's very easy to download. And uh, keep me posted on what's coming in and going out, etc., etc. Uh, anything long range that might be coming in that we can uh, that we can check this is another 350 mm, possibly yeah That is the one. Oh, that's close out then, isn't it? Yeah, nailed it. I'll tell you what, my pilots were so welcoming. Um, they stayed on behind because they wanted to say goodbye to me. Um, so I went up the front and had a great chat with them. Uh, the first officer, the CSFO, we actually caught him during Storm Eunice. But it was during the latter part of Storm Eunice where it turned into a bit of a headwind. So, But he still managed to get it down. 350, senior first officer. Um, their names should be... I only put their first names on the, on there, didn't I? On their Twitter uh, post. Did you put the link up for Eve, Jelly? Okay. Yeah, you want to go and check that Eve link out, folks, um, if you get a moment. So apparently we have an Iceland Air, and before that we've got Emirates 350 EK5. Uh, in around about an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, is that going to be before or after? It's going to be about around about the same time as this uh, Iceland Airs. I think it's their latest livery. Is it not? National Geographic livery with Iceland Air. Captain Russell and SFO Scott. Um, I did get their surnames, but just because they're such cool guys. I like to call them by their first names nowadays, just to, you know, just to keep it that little bit. Appreciate the, uh, and respect the privacy as well. Let me just, uh... No, did I say 350? Sorry, 380. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I mean, man, really, let's face it, you know, two heavy duty days in New York, come back here, get one day rest, feel absolute crap, but come out when I'm still a little bit, um, Bluebird, when I'm still a little bit lagged, you know what I mean? Always takes a good couple of days to adjust back into uh, your timeline. 
At least that's my excuse. Cool, you need that looks good in this heat, doesn't it? Needs to be the ice plane, doesn't it? Kimi Raikkonen's plane. The ice plane. Wow. So I'm wondering what that RTO was all about. It's got to be engine related. Can only really be engine related, can't it? Uh, or hydraulics, maybe? I don't know, but... Um, wow, was that a last minute? Oh, be interesting. Surely somebody from that, from the, uh, from the flight has made a... Uh, whether there was a big bang, you know, when they were halfway down the runway or something like that happened, I don't know. He may have RTO'd halfway down the runway though, Jilly, so and then he's just rolled it all the way out, hasn't he? I mean, you know, everything's configured. It's not like he's forgot to extend the slats or something like that, you know, it's all part of the standard takeoff. It's all good. I don't know if I'm gonna get this because of the sun. Silkway 747 folks, freighter. We'll get her on the other side, shall we? Um, might get a slightly better shot of her. Just don't wanna forget. So your tweets on, on uh... no no saying welcome to Twitter. <laughs> Don't mind that. Shit. The little fellas. No. Oh. God. To see our tweets, yeah. Be a bit easier than that, couldn't it? It's a little bit of a long winded way around. That. It's almost verging on the two click rule, isn't it? So now the big question is TAP being an operator of both Airbus and Embraer, I know they've uh, ordered and have got a lot of. Uh, um, Neo jets from Airbus. Have they uh, have they ordered any um, E195s or 190s? The E jets. I, t I can't help but say every time I say E jet, it's a good job I'm not Irish because uh, you bloody E jet. Um, Right, okay, so I've clicked on the, uh, the, 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 oh, there we are, yeah, right, okay. It's actually a three-click roll, isn't it? 767, nice. Is this an ex-passenger jet? Is it P2F or is it a pure freighter? She's a pure freighter, is she? Wow, so she had retrofitted winglets. Uh, sorry, she had winglets fitted in the factory, I'm guessing, that jet. Very interesting. So I'm guessing all of the um, DHL 767s from a certain date 
um, that were manufactured in at Boeing have uh, have had um, the winglets fitted, um, factory fitted, should I say? Um, Yeah, Silk Road, man, she's gone. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Do miss them from time to time, and I do apologise. Go on and give us the latest news. Ambulance en route to the United 767. Have I just... Uh, that's a bit old, that, isn't it? I mean, he was... Uh, what 767? Yeah, but RTO'd yesterday, didn't uh, the, this morning, didn't it? So why would an ambulance be going to it now? I mean, I know they were taking their time, but flipping it. Or short staffed, should I say. Might get to hear this uh, Turkish 350 just. And that's about all you get. Ross Tyrrell, love the JFK shows, lots of going on, including the wildlife. And what a setting, yes. What a backdrop to, uh, to our two days at JFK, man. Well, you've just got to use your own intelligence, haven't you? You've got to go, you've got to keep him touch with them the airline will it will let you know when it's come out and when you can come and pick it up and uh it's um it is one of those things isn't it it's just you've got to stay uh constantly in touch with them which is not a good thing as a passenger to have to do that it's a bit like having your your baggage not turn up isn't it you know um it's a terrible thing because when you think about it they're asking you to leave the airport if you don't live near the airport you know you've got to you got to go home and then you've got to come back uh, or you've got to stick around or do whatever it is you've got to do, which is a, a terrible thing, man. Causes huge amount of uh, inconvenience for the passenger. EK3 due in around about, was it 7.03 did she say there? Got some absolutely epic banking shots, departure shots with A380s, 747s, 350s, A3, oh it's just like A330s, 767s. Absolutely awesome man. Omar.
Okay, wonder if we'll get the, uh, the start up, flaps extension. So he hasn't started up his, uh, by the looks, oh yeah, maybe he has started up his number one because all the uh, flight surfaces look to be in their neutral position. I don't know, I don't think he's, has he extended those flaps yet? It's usually, yeah, they might be in their first position, I don't know, but normally it's the full position they do it from right at the get-go. Big old winders on the 350. Uh, when you look behind the, uh, the ground spoilers, and you see the big winders that control the flaps. Marie. Elfie Wickens, Miami and JFK, the best American shows I've seen since being a member. That's fantastic, Elfie. The other ones are good, don't get me wrong. You know, uh, all the places that we go to, people that we see, planes that we see. Give and go duck, very true. Yeah. Hiring, hiring people is one thing. Training them is the other massive thing. Wow, Keith Cornell. Iceland Air have started putting baggage handlers on flights to Amsterdam to help with turnaround times of aircraft. What a great thing to do. Yeah, but what a great thing to do. You only need a couple, don't you? You only need a couple. What a, what a, what a fantastic thing to do. Good for you, Iceland Air. I think, um, I think other airlines should follow suit on that one. Mind you, the problem with that is you're down two staff at Keflavik as well, aren't you? Um, but maybe they've got enough staff. Maybe all that shenanigans isn't happening at uh, Keflavik. Um, We've missed our MD-11 FedEx jet, haven't we, Jilly? KLM going to be the first operator to operate the 195E2 out of uh, London City, folks. I'm not sure exactly when that's going to be. Uh, they've uh, still got to um, uh, certify the aircraft for, uh, for landing. Uh, the, uh, the steep landing, a steep approach, sorry, the steep approach into London City. Uh, which they're going to be doing within the next week with the 195. Oh, is this Ty's uh, Dreamliner again? Wasn't it there 350 we saw last week? Ty's 350. No, 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 here. Oh, was it? Okay. No, 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 no. It's usually the 777 that they bring in. I, I thought last week was the first time we'd seen the 350 for a long while. No. Okay. When we're up here in the afternoon, normally we see an MD-11 coming over here, flying, flying into Stansted, but we're too late for it. Yeah. Richmond Miller's just arrived, uh, just landed in Atlanta and received a Big Jet TV live notification. How about that? Good to see you, Richmond. Hopes all is well. Andy P. Anchorage was his favourite of all time. It was, I mean, it was just jumbo, 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 like, you know. But the great thing is that regardless of how many jumbos there are, you just cannot get bored of them. Uh, but also, it's jumbos with a mixing in of MD-11s and uh, even a DC-6. It's ITA. Tarnish 7. Yeah. 
miles behind on the comments, Chile. No, 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 I'm, I'm going to send it to you. like that livery it's quite sporty in it really sort of uh, quite sporty that um, ITA livery uh, no I don't agree Jilly Willis Video Production. Good day to you. Yeah, exactly. So it might have been yesterday. So it might be absolutely fine. Okay. okay. Freddie Olsen also loved Anchorage. Oh, Les Donaldson. Lots of people saying about that. Richmond Miller. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, are you sure about that, though? Did you not hear that? Did you not get it? No, because I'll forget. Sure. Yeah, good luck with that. How are you going to remind me to tell you when you don't know what it is I'm going to tell you? Oh my God, that's brilliant. I'm reminding you to tell me the thing that you were going to tell me about three hours ago. Oh yeah, what was that? I don't know, you asked me to remind you. So. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Very quiet at London Heathrow today, I've got to say. Very quiet. Emma Tozer, Emirates 380, due in four minutes. And uh, there, oh, I'm not going to pick that up, that's long range that is. What's that?
Oh. Yeah, big twisty turny approaches at New York as well, man. Emma Toza, Singapore, triple seven due in eight minutes. Uh, Lee Bottings watching the show on his 55 inch TV volume up looks awesome how cool is that i like the sound of that literally chris broadhurst 14 sleeps to vegas and counting fantastic well at least you'll have air conditioning out there mate Emirates registration, somebody wanting there. Diesel 13, thank you. Nice. Three eighty next in, folks. Get ready. Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> oh. For Gordon Bennett's sake. Uh. Oh, look, look. It's the old fire engine. I love that old fire engine, even though it's probably only about three years old. Just looks really old, doesn't it? When you compare it to the, uh, to the new Super Duper ones, it looks proper like, you know, uh, a kid's toy. That's my kind of fire engine, that is. Oh, look, he's taking that turn a little bit sharp, isn't he? The water sloshing around in there. No. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, folks. Oh, yeah, that was it. I'm not even. <laughs> Brian Sutton is a returning member. <laughs> Be quite a bit of a um, spacing behind this 380 and the, uh, the next one in, I'd imagine longer than normal, probably double the amount of time, uh, just because of the, uh, the wake turbulence this thing leaves behind it.
Mona. Oh my goodness me, are you serious? Oh wow, that's not good, mate. That is not good. That's bad news, that is. No, 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 and I'm, I'm not really interested in that, but it's just interesting that... Ting Tong John. <laughs> Don't know. Oh yeah, no, he's dead. Long time dead. Yeah. Say it there, Dick. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Don't often see that. Emirates not usually kept hanging around, I've got to say. I wonder how much they pay for, uh, for having that um, sodding great big model on the roundabout at the entrance to uh, the tunnel at T3 too. Interesting to find out, really. Well, you're never going to find out, but that's a big rental, isn't it? A couple of million pound a year, maybe? I don't know. Maybe even more than that. Probably a lot more than that, I'd imagine. These look like Trent's. On the 767. Oh, 777, sorry. Should have taken another day off, son. <laughs> Alan Turner, welcome to Premium. That's the fella off of Emmerdale we were talking about who's long, he popped his clogs a long time ago. He was a lovely fella. He still don't want to come out, does he? Go, come on, come on, out you come. Come on. <laughs> still, still not happy about it. Yeah, isn't it? Davey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. No, 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 no. It probably wasn't that, Jelly, to be perfectly honest with you. In all honesty. In all, in all honesty. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it, mate. That's precisely it. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If they are, it's pretty lame, to be honest with you. No, exactly, exactly. So that's why it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, so what have we got coming in, which is really interesting? How long is that 
uh, Iceland Air flight out, and let's see if we can track it on Flight Radar 24. Um, can you fill it? Can you find it for me, Jim? It's another ITA jet. No, it's not. It's a it's a it's a little Embraer with KLM, Car LM. It's one of their old ones. Look, is it a little 190? Is it a 190 with the? Um, I think it's a 190, isn't it? Oh, nice double bubble shot. We too. We definitely, and I could have done, done with wearing it yesterday. I know. Shall I tell you why, Jilly? Because triple seven is just the numbers, isn't it? Is that a uh, 777 turning on to finals? Establishing ILS 10 miles. Maybe it's a Dreamliner. I don't know, is it a 777-200? Is that a 777-200? Yes, Jilly, yes. Yeah, this is, this is a Dreamliner, I think. No, it's not. That wing doesn't look flexed enough. No, the one, two out. No, 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 no. The one... Oh, it is a triple seven. Okay, the one that's two out is a triple seven two, is it? Oh, <laughs> I'll get me coat. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the engines didn't look big enough uh, for GEs. That's all. That's why I thought it might be a roller powered two hundred. But this isn't. This is most definitely. A GE 90 powered 777-300 with Singapore Airlines. So folks, we're going to be opening up our uh, flight radar apps in a short while. And we're going to be tracking this uh, 737. You got the link, have you got, can you post the link for the, with the, the registration and the uh, details of it? We're posting that up now, folks. Yeah, we're pinning it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fly it in, right off the throttles, drop it, nice, little bit of aero brake, ooh she came down quite fast, nice, now he or she, she will taxi up here and uh, probably going to that gate there, I would imagine. Just see if she's, uh, if there's anybody waiting there. Not really. <laughs> One of those gates there, anyway. One of these days. Why, you little. Martin Hemmings is a new member. Welcome, Martin. We've got a brother called Dave Evan. Profit Hunter, PR Zig, is it? Or Zik, Z Z I Q, photographed Paris Air Show 2019, uh, Philip Sinclair. Well, the um, Embraer have a newly liveried E195 E2 jet, which is kind of like a Transformers. Um, hold on a minute, which one is it? Let me just have a look here, quick. just. Uh, I didn't realise when I was coming back from uh, 
when I was coming back from in a taxi back from Heathrow the other day drove past the bottom down oh hold on and I spotted a couple of elephants in the field yeah man it's a zoo there's a bleeding zoo at the other end of the airfield oh, obviously not a couple of like the gypsies have got hold of a couple of elephants they look after their horses well say the same for anybody who looks after horses. Some of them are badly treated, others are very well looked after. But these elephants look very well looked after. Oh, nice. Got the A350 displaying at Farnborough, folks. The A350 900. That's going to be a walk through. Uh, very, very close up. Uh, look at the set at the um, at the triple seven at the seven. The 779 and the 73710. Where's he going then? He's coming over here then, is he? 359. Uh, just have a little look and see if I can find that actually. Oh, no, he's just in the chicane there. Yeah, but if, if people want to know, Jilly, we can give them an update on what the latest plans are. No harm in that. Saturday show and then Monday through Friday uh, air displays. Can't you just post a link? Can't you post a link to the app so that people can go in the app and look? No. Okay. Azul reveals dramatic 195E2 livery. Nice. Wow, you've seen that? I mean, it's uh, not to everyone's taste, but um, I'm sure. Wow, that is seriously funky, man. Check that out. Azul Embraer E195E2 livery. Uh, and it will come up with that Azul. Where is that 737? Is it, is it a 737, Jilly? The, uh, oh, it's a 75, is it? Yeah, but I haven't seen it flying, only seen it, you know, in a picture, yeah. Wow. I'll tell you what, though.
Nice Vistara job. A10 Thunderbolt? No. Three miles out, what? Crossing the somewhere, doing something. Has he actually left this, uh, this 757G? Nowhere near Mauritius, is it? <laughs> or Cyprus? Oh, just coming into UK uh, airspace then. Okay. Okay, our Iceland air jet, folks, which, um... How good does that look on your 55-inch TV? Oh, oh no, man, no. How long, how long has this been going on? In a few minutes, did you say? Oh, man. We've got ex-Virgin Atlantic 747 Barbarella just come out of Ramstein, folks, and now flying with Atlas Air. I mean, we did try and find, we did try and get her in um, in Anchorage, didn't we? But it never happened. Um, incidentally, latest the show that we're going to be featured on Britain's busiest airport, folks. Next uh, is next. Um, it's on the nineteenth. So something to look forward to. Put that one in your diary. Britain's busiest airport. Heathrow's <laughs> busiest airport. Easy, son, easy. Who's the one? Right, where's the, where's the... Now, where is that? Where is it now, then? That, that 757, is it? Is it? Okay. Yeah. 
Do I know where the Isle of Man is? Come on, man. I mean, give me some credit. What's he doing all the way over there, then? Hold on a minute. What's my filter? London Heathrow, both, is active. I haven't got JFK filter on, man. Why am I seeing a, war, a jet from Warsaw? Oh, clear. Right. Filters. Airport. L, H, R. London Heathrow. Set both inbound and outbound. Apply. Hold on a minute. No, it's still doing it. Or isn't it? Yes, it is still doing it. You don't see many Ryanair jets on. Why, my filter's not working, Jilly. It's got an hole in it, dear Lizer, dear Lizer. I've got a hole in my filter, dear Lizer, dear Lizer. Got a fill. Right. Okay, clear. I don't have any filters on at the moment, right? Okay, what I'm actually going to do is... Yeah. Directly opposite the K. No, he's not there. He's not there for me, mate. Right. Oh, he's just doing me head in. Oh, mate. No, no, no. Cloud. We've got cloud. Oh, I'm not even going to get a shot of her. Oh, what a shame. We've missed her again, folks. We've missed her again. She's uh, very elusive, is our Barbarella. It's not fair how it's not working, Jilly, man. Probably, yeah. No, I haven't. I've got all my filters cleared. All my fil You can't have more than one filter on. You can't have more than one filter on. No, you can't. Oh! Oh. Where do you see your filters? Where do you see your filters? Why would I have anything on that shows a bleeding Ryanair from Warsaw to flipping Dublin or whatever it is? Why would I have that on? He still won't come out. Come on! <laughs> it's a din din! Oh, scary copter, scary copter. That could be our mate, couldn't it? From up, blah, blah. Where's he come from? Not Little Granston, is it? Look at that wing, man. <laughs> yes, sorry for all our Irish friends, but I just had to question it, you know. <laughs> but still, why would I? It's definitely not working, mate. 
When you hit the little filters thing at the bottom, Jilly, yeah? That shows you all your filters, yeah? That shows you all your filters, yeah? Hit the filters. Filter. Save filters. Well, I've got London Heathrow, but let me just delete that, yeah? And then start, delete that. Start a whole new one, right? No saved filters. Go to airport. Put in the top, put L-H-R. E G L L Inbound, outbound, both, yeah. Filtered, not highlighted, filtered, apply. Nothing. Still the same. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, it says top right gold. No idea, mate. No. It's because it's me. That's why. Because it's me. Surprised they haven't turned their number one off yet. Normally they do well before they uh, arrive on stand. I did. I did all of that, Jilly. I did all of that. No. Filters have been temporarily disabled. Tap to restore. <laughs> hey? Oh, there they are. Now it's working. Flipping heck, man. I've never seen that. I've never seen that, 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 that prompt before. There it is. There it is. Right, there we go, folks. Oh, nice looking jet, this. So, as I was saying about half an hour ago, folks, uh, those who follow uh, Flight Radar 24, the app, uh, the uh, aircraft that you want to look at or track is Foxtrot Lima, I'm guessing, or is it India? Is it Foxtrot Lima? Uh, 454. Ice. 454 is the other call sign, ICE, I-C-E, 454. Air 757-200 from Keflavik, uh, currently at 39 fares and feet. She has a black livery. It's the new, um, the new restyling of Iceland Air. Not just the livery, but across the board, uh, the business is being sort of like rebranded and uh, with all new sort of like, you know, uh, solid colored tails. And, uh, and also the, um, uh, the engine cowls as well. So, mine are, my, gone of the, uh, gone of the um, yellow that we used to seeing, which is a shame, I've got to say. I hope they do do a sort of like orangey type one with uh, the orange cowls just to uh, tell you what is interesting uh, out of out of um, for remembrance of their old older livery you know a bit like a bit like um, what is it Solero a Solero because Icelandair's 
orange is like Solero, isn't it? It's not yellow, is it? Now that thing performed amazingly last time we were down the road filming. Uh, what I thought was a, um, a rejected take, a rejected takeoff, turned out to be a very derated um, departure out of two seven right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I know Ben. I, I know you're clutching. Well, well you're being pedantic there, or whatever it is, whichever way to describe it. But um, uh, yes, it is the National Geographic livery. However, it's modelled. The new livery is styled and modelled on that particular livery as well. So, uh, as in the solid uh, tail markings. And um, however, I think. The new one, also, uh, the new livery is an ice and air, a lot bigger along the side as well. I mean, I, I know what you're saying there, Ben, but it looks more like the new livery than it does like the old livery, if you know what I mean. But anyway, it's ice 454, folks, if you want to track it. Leroy just had AN12 uh, overhead. Yeah, interesting sound. Those, uh, especially the uh, A400Ms when they when they are out over the top of you. Um, very high pitched, and then as it passes and goes further and further away, the, dro the pitch drops in note from high pitch, sort of like, to a lower pitch. Obviously, a bit like a long-winded variant of the Doppler effect, isn't it? Because it's... See, what you're getting there is the Doppler effect in terms of the sound as well. Doppler effect, I mean the equivalent of like something passing you at speed, depending on, because normally, you know, what we do with the big trucks, like, mm, mm, mm. that's the Doppler effect. <laughs> Never comes by and says hello anymore, does he, the old fella? Wow, Aviation Live and videos watching from Tokyo, Japan. Russ CT, thank you very much indeed um, for the updates. Zephyr 22 with a star. Uh, hi Jerry and Jilly, been first class member for two and a half years and this is the first time I've ever posted. I just want to say you've helped me, um, you've helped me through some tough times lately. Your streams are therapy. Oh wow, Zephyr, that is great news. And um, we do get quite a lot of uh, communications about that and we really are uh, appreciative um, about for the fact that we do um, you know help help people get through some you know testing times um, I guess that's because we're so regular in it it's good to be regular in it so that you can uh, you know you've got something to look forward to haven't you um, if you're doing so a bit like Coronation Street <laughs> oh save it Ice 454 over Manchester, Cyberflyer 1. Dylan Turk, I'm sure all the pilots and cabin crew at Play Iceland are all ex WOW air crews. I don't know why you're saying that, Dylan. What's the reason for that? Along with Doppler, isn't it also? that the compressor is in the front of the engine and is higher pitched than the exhaust in the rear. Your pal Palpatine, very good point. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is uh, when you have a, when you have the, uh, an aircraft like these aircraft, when they turn on 
face forward on the uh, onto the uh, the the um, the roll on point, you get the noise from the the air, which is uh, the fan blades. More than anything else, it's the sound of the the air and the uh, the fan blades. But yes, the compressors and all that kind of stuff working behind it. But then when it turns away from you, you're getting the sound of the exhaust, which, like he says, is uh, is a lower pitch. And a great sound, isn't it, eh? We love it. We love it. Kerry Davies, can we all watch Britain's busiest airport on the live chat next week, goggle box style? <laughs> we should actually do that, shouldn't we, Jimmy? Yeah. About what? What about it? Which is during Farnborough week. It's Farnborough week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but we can, when I get home from Farnborough. Yeah, man, I'll be, I mean, we'll, we're going to be finishing it, like, like uh, yeah. Well, why can't we just do what we, what, what I, oh, yeah, but we can, yeah. Yeah, but what about the delays? What about the delays? Well, that's a problem then, isn't it? Even if it's one second, it's bad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but hold on a minute. If we did it, yeah, with me in the pip, yeah, turn the monetization off, obviously. No, because everybody will be all watching it. I've already seen this bit. I've already seen that bit. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that would work. Yeah, but what would you see first? You'd see, you'd see what's on the, what's, Hold on a minute. We can run a camera looking for TV, yeah? And then a pimp of me. Right. Is it not? What, what channel? I don't know, man. Oh, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Martin Howard is a new member. Welcome, Martin. Darren Golding therapy, isn't that the other side of Greece? Oh dear, you guys are never gonna let me live that one down, are you? Ken B, Emirates 380, 30 minutes out. Can we can we cut out that geographical, massive geographical uh, error? Error, error, uh, at the beginning of the show, Jilly. I was only joking, but by the way, folks, I know that Mauritius is nowhere near Cyprus. Oh my god, you stupid boy. Where are you going? Mauritius for holidays? Yeah, 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 might nip over to... Might nip over to... Uh... Now I'll tell you what I did do. I filmed our departure out of Heathrow uh, last week on Friday uh, on the 350. And boy oh boy, did he give it some beans. Um, we were a couple of hours late. He made up an hour uh, to get us there. Just, just on the hour late, made up a load of time. 
uh, they actually uh, put more fuel on board uh, so that they could uh, guess they could guess there a bit quicker um, and fair play to them because that ultimately will cost them more money um, but they got us there uh, a lot quicker we're well, not quicker but they got us there um, earlier than anticipated put it that way with the delays and all that malarkey um, but the only problem was that you know how it is sometimes and I've, I've mentioned this I chatted about this uh, with my with with the, uh, fantastic members during the show at New York um, there was a very annoying rat well not annoying but there was a rattle a very high-pitched rattle um, around the window area which was obviously plastic an attachment somewhere was a little bit loose or uh, or the or the or the or the the, the components were sort of like just touching each other. That high frequency rattle that you get sometimes on aircraft. Unfortunately, it, it was happening during the the uh, the spool up point when he when he powered up right the way to the point where he where he where he left the tarmac. Um, and I don't know whether it's worthy of posting or not because the rattle is quite annoying if you know what I mean and I know people are going to probably go oh Jerry you shouldn't have put your phone on the on the window like that because it just rattles and it's nothing to do with that I always anchor my fingers on the uh, on the window and anchor the phone uh, very steadily between my elbows and the you know I, I'm, I'm very careful with that sort of thing I know that you don't obviously lean your phone up unless you can lean it flat up against the window literally flat against the window but the high-pitched um, high frequency rattle was uh, just something that I couldn't eliminate so um, very very um, explosive was the departure because he was and it was a and it was a turn and burn as well went for it do we get Martin Howard uh, can be a 380 Emirates 30 minutes out no oh, Paul Howard thank you very much Blimey, I'll tell you what, if I went for therapy, the therapist would probably have to have therapy by the time they finish with me. <laughs> I'll have them in, I'll have them lying on the couch before, by the end of the session, I can tell you. <laughs> so tell me about your childhood then. I don't like the sound of your granddad. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, Daffid Lewis, DHL with Pride livery, 59 minutes out. First, uh, is that the first? I think that's the first American, as in US, carrier departure we've seen so far going out of the southern runway. See China Eastern. All replacement engine cowls um, re uh, aft cowl and reverse the doors sliding doors all replacements on that apart from the engine nacelles or nacelles whichever way you want to describe it
know. It's not something you very often see on the uh, on the uh, on the taxiways here at uh, or the infield, should I say? It's a recovery vehicle for a heavy vehicle, isn't it? That's a proper lump, that is. There's one of the newer uh, fire units. Delta 1441. Wow, ice and air just took all the beautiful colour out of their livery. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from on that one, uh, Delta 1441. However, I think, I hope that ice and air will um, introduce a sort of like an orangey um, uh, livery of their new liveries. I'm not sure if they're planning to do the entire fleet. Of course, we still do have um, so many of their aircraft that are um, flying with the older livery, with the um, orange cows and um, the blue tail and all that kind of stuff. A bit like, kind of a bit like what, it's a bit like what Lufthansa have done in a funny sort of way with their new livery versus their older livery. Um, I should see a big, possibly a right hand turn out of this one when he goes out, but nothing like New York with that sort of like, as soon as the gear's up, they crank it right. I think that's um, to avoid housing. Uh, the guys on the flight deck did actually tell me that the reason for the approach, the approach pattern uh, for uh, specifically for 22 and also um, for 22 and what was it what was the uh, what were the other runways Jilly? what the left and right they were three left three right uh, when we were looking at them yeah yeah and the ones that were coming toward thirteen left and thirteen right. 13 left, 13 right. Yeah, yeah, and the, the approach to 13 left, obviously to avoid Manhattan, is a, is a, is a, is a, quite a sharp, well, there's two segments to the turn. And um, yeah, it can get quite, uh, quite interesting, they told me, uh, during, on windy days approaching there. Could get another right hand turn out of it unless it's going to go out a long way and then make its next turn So hearing that uh, that aircraft experienced a, a full-on rejected takeoff earlier on today, not seeing any um,
that generator or whatever it is kind of looks like it's uh, parked right up next to that number one engine which could indicate that it is a it was an engine it was indeed an engine issue frightening you know not the uh, not the best experience in the world to have is it Uh, Matthew Bentley, ICE 454 just started its descent. Let's just have a look and see where she's at. I'm on Flight Radar 24 right now, tracking her. And she's just over Aylesbury right now. Stephen Billings, ICE 454, number two most tracked on Flight Radar 24. Let's get it to number one, folks probably will be by the time I reach the bottom of the comments. H, ice and air over the top of me descending. H must be in Aylesbury then. Mark Jones, good evening to you. Martin Howard. Uh, Jerry, how many airlines carry retro livery? Oh, quite a few, actually, Martin. <coughs> um, yeah, quite a few. One of our uh, our uh, British Airways, of course. Uh, many others. Lufthansa. Um, God, blimey. There are too many to mention. Saw so Qatar's beautiful retro livery. I say retro livery. It's um, it's their anniversary livery, isn't it? Uh, that um, that we caught right at the beginning of the show. Aer Lingus. SAS uh, Ray Cole welcome back Ray with a star straight into superclass thank you sir Earnshaw 5 is also a new member welcome Earnshaw yeah many many airlines there's quite a few uh, Martin that um, that have a retro scheme Uh, Pete Richardson, 454, just under 20 minutes out. Tracking it now. Just between Bovingdon uh, and Chesham, which means that uh, she, if she's put into the Bovingdon hold, then uh, she's just now turning left. Diane, 78. Wow, Ian Roper, QF1 is two hours into her journey. 7 a.m. she lands tomorrow morning. Sabira, good day to you. Uh, JR, has a 747SP ever been caught on Big Jet TV? Unfortunately not, JR. Um, I think the only place we're really going to get that is if we uh, head to Vegas, isn't it? Gary Lyon. Yeah, it would be good to see Virgin. It wouldn't be a retro livery per se, would it? It would be a um, uh, an OG livery or whichever way you want to describe it. Like the original livery. Stephen Remy, Robert Mendez, Gary Lyon. Uh, absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more on that retro, on that uh, OG livery or uh, what would they call it? What was the first aircraft uh, that Virgin flew, that first 747? Was it a 200? Yeah. <clears throat> is this it? Is this it? Is this it? No, this is a 757 though, isn't it? Oh, it's a 767, sorry. 
with United, yeah. <laughs> Just sort of winglets, that was all. And it was more head on. But... La. They worked hard, those seven sixes. They worked very, very hard. So in terms of uh, if that is an engine issue on that 767 over there, uh, the word will have already gone out uh, to their contact uh, the AOG specialists, aircraft on ground specialists here in the UK to supply uh, whatever it is. Well, actually, if it was a compressor failure, maybe, I don't know. Andy Tomo, your live streams always make my day but brighter. Uh, only place I can stay and share my passion for aviation with this awesome community. Andy Tomo. That's a wonderful thing to say. Uh, thank you. I think you reflect quite a lot of people's opinions as well. Uh, Chris Broadhurst. Oh, I'm all right, Chris. Um, I feel absolutely fine. It's just me voice, that's all. I've got a headache, I've got a sore throat, I've got anything like that. Which ironically enough, last time when we did do React, if anybody was, a lot of people were with us then when we did React, what was it, 2017 was it, Jilly, or 2018? I can't remember. 2019. Oh, Oh, there we go. That's brilliant. That now that I've got that side button thing, I don't need to don't need to go near the device or anything. That's brilliant, man. Oh. Oh. So why is there an X against the Wi-Fi? Oh, it was hydraulic problems, right? Oh, okay. So, 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 just what's that again? So, it was a hydraulic issue. Hmm. How would a passenger? Yeah. Why would a? Yeah. Because hydraulics would be. I mean, the only things that really are powered on the uh, on, 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 on an aircraft like 767 hydraulically would be um, uh, well, the, the the flaps are air screw, aren't they? Um, the leading edge slats are already deployed. Flaps are deployed, so he would be able to. And the um, the speed brakes, the ground spoilers, those things that you just saw come up, they're hydraulically powered. Um, and to be honest with you, it'd be very uh, difficult to um, do an RTO without your speed brakes, uh, ground spoilers, etc. Uh, undercarriage is um, undercarriage deployment is uh, is all um, is hydraulics. Nice. Um, but in terms of a 
Hydraulic failure on takeoff. Hydraulic failure on takeoff. Uh, yeah, because the yoke is all, it's all a fly-by wire, isn't it? All these jets are all fly-by wire, so there's no cables per se. Uh, there's springs in the, uh, in the systems. I, I guess there's some kind of uh, mechanism in there to, to give it feel, uh, to make it feel like a, you know, a, a hydraulically powered uh, system, much like power steering, but it's all fly-by wire. So, um, yeah, I tend to agree with him there that that, that, that you know, that, and 80 knots. Was that the uh, was that the speed it was travelling when it when it RTO'd? Because that oh, it's over 80 knots, right? Okay. I say that I'm quite sure that it sounds more engine related to me. Okay, this is our aircraft, folks. Ice 454, Iceland Air. And a uh, good thing is, I think you'll find that she'll taxi. She should taxi up here. She might go around the back, actually, because I think she's going to park up. I don't know where she's going to park up. T2, won't it be? Anyway, here we go. Iceland Air 7579. Is it uh, a unique aircraft? It's the National Geographic livery. If I can get it. Here she comes. When did they have that painted? I think the uh, I think they're electric motors, aren't they? The uh, the motors that power the winders, I think. You need to vacate the runway, sir. Or madam. Oh, wow, so. Why is it called National Geographic? Why doesn't it, why doesn't it have anything? Right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. That aircraft. Okay, so. Yeah, there is. RB211s, of course, folks, don't forget. Rolls Royce engines. 
So it may have been painted in Norwich. North Norfolk Digital. It's 1.38 a.m. and that was Scritty Politi. Oh yeah, started to watch it. John Grinham, 320200, 321200. John Grinham, 321200, sorry. Fantastic new uh, livery from Isendair. Apparently it's not new, John, but uh, I know what you're saying. It looks good, doesn't it? It's been around um, a little while, but it's the first time we've seen it. And um, it kind of matches the uh, the new um, branding that uh, the Iceland Air are running with at the moment. If you look, if you go on board their aircraft, you'll see all of their um, their onboard um, booklets and stuff like that. All has this new sort of like multi-coloured uh, feel about it. These new pastel colours, although it's not very pastel, is it? That black. Got so. Oh, Robert Mendez, 767 is not fly by wire. It's old school with hydraulics. Oh, okay. No, very rightly so, Robert. Absolutely. So you might be right, actually. Then in that case, it could be, uh, very possibly be, um, if you've got a uh, hydraulic failure on the elevators, yeah, then definitely. And the, um, and the systems would come up with warnings. So yeah, thank you, Robert. It kind of makes sense as well, really, because, uh, I think the only uh, fly-by wire uh, Boeing uh, is the triple seven and the seven eight seven, isn't it? Um, oh, look at that! Two seven five sevens on the trot. So this must be hydraulic then as well. May still have electric winders. Bloody hell. Blimey, I mean. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, so by the sounds of it, that's a very late RTO as well. 140 knots, man. I mean, the rotate speed for, for a jet like that is around about between 140, 140 160, isn't it? So um, now hearing what you're saying and uh, Robert Mendes putting me right and putting me straight that the 767 and I'm guessing these 757s as well are a hydraulically operated um, uh, uh, elevators, and um, and of course the uh, is another Emirates 380 folks for you, and of course the um, the speed brakes, but um, that kind of makes a lot of sense then. So warnings would have come up that um, hydraulic failure. Wow. Got to admit, probably an easier thing to fix than in than an engine. Runway won't be melting, mate. It's uh, the, uh, the, the 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 materials used in runway uh, in the asphalt. You know the, the very um, sophisticated materials used to stop. Yeah, I know, but. Yeah, I know. Mm. 
of course, um, I think that one of the engines um, on the 767 and possibly on the 75s as well um, is responsible for powering up the hydraulic systems, the pumps and so on and so forth. So, uh, maybe an ancillary pump failure maybe a false warning as well you never know sometimes it can be a false warning but they will have to inspect that aircraft thoroughly run tests on it good looking that I think Lewis boy welcome back Lewis boy Lewis Oh, Leroy, I missed the Magnus 747 over the top, GP. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that it there? Is that the Mag Magma Jumbo over, over the top of me coming from the west? It's a Jumbo, I think. No, I just missed the ice in there. Uh, sorry, the uh, Air Canada Max. Just wanted to get that jumbo, folks. Hope you don't. Uh, hope you forgive me for that. Always got to get up a bit of time for a jumbo, haven't you? Hello. Is he? Um, is he in the holding pattern? DHL 300 looks like it's in the hold or it's just come out of the hold or It really was uh, Airbus that pioneered the uh, fly-by-wire systems, of course. Thank you for that, Leroy. Rachel Clare. Almost on time with their uh, simultaneous arrivals and departures with uh, Emirates 380. One more left-hand turn, Clyde. Don't be shy now.
Oh, I can hear those trends. Wow, look how outdated the Alitalia livery looks now. Although a lot of people are still going to say I like it. Kind of got an Alpine Stars look about it, if you know your racing stuff. If that was uh, black and white, it would uh, look like Alpine Stars. E-Star. Transatlantic flight, folks. That single aisle jet has just flown all the way across the Atlantic. Yeah, I think they're down to, uh, they've, they've maxed out at 100,000 passengers a day at Heathrow, haven't they? I think they're losing about 6,000 passengers from, I think pre-pandemic was about 106,000, wasn't it? So, if uh, if the if the if the infrastructure was there and the purse and the and the the staff were there, he's out, he's out on the field again. Look, the toy fire truck. I love it. Jack Van Dyck's Alitalia Stratus is a big part of why I miss the airline, to be honest. Interesting. Is that the livery, the Stratus livery? Interesting, looking where that uh, Air Canada Max is going. Straight onto a remote stand. That's odd, I've got to say. There's a bus waiting already. Two buses waiting for the passengers already. Well, they won't mind getting off uh, in these conditions. Probably be quite, quite pleasant, actually. Now, if you ever go on an airplane and you park at remote stand, make sure you're the last one off, because that means you'll be the first one on when you get off, the first one off the bus. You want to be the last on the bus. Just a little bit of a tip. Always works. And if you're sort of standing around outside the aircraft, they're not going to force you onto the bus. So, uh, so just sort of like, you know, uh, pretend you're looking for something in your, in your carry-on or something. Oh, I just can't find that. Is it in there? Is it in there? Has he got on yet? No, is it in there? There's a few more people coming down the steps. Hold on a minute. Keep looking, keep looking. Right, pretend you're looking. Pretend you're, oh, yeah, no, I'm just looking for something in my bag. And I'm like, this is just... <laughs> Right, okay, there's the last few off. Right, okay. On the bus, bosh, straight in there. Door closes right up against you. As soon as you get to the terminal, you're the first one off, and therefore you're the first to get through to uh, passport control. It's always a mad rush, isn't it? Which is never pleasant, let's be honest. Scotty Typely. Typely? Typely. Nice and there, 757, that's not long arrived, came over me just under 30,000 feet. Yeah. It's quite interesting, Jilly tracked my A350 up to uh, cruising altitude. It took eight minutes to get to 39,000 feet. Can you believe that? Eight minutes. Yes, yeah, just going into orbit. Branson's riding it on the back with a big leash up against it. Yeehaw! 
Tracy Byram, way too small for me to fly across the Atlantic. Uh, Tracy, I've got to be honest with you. I flew um, Iceland Air 737 Max um, back from Canada. I'll just say Canada. Um, was it Toronto I flew back from with Iceland Air? No, that was the final leg of Anchorage, wasn't it? Seattle? I don't know, whatever. It's just, uh, this is quite rare. We don't often see this. We've seen it a few times, but great to see Egypt Air A320 Neo, or is it a 319? It's 319, isn't it? Yeah, but anyway, I've flown the, uh, I have flown uh, the 737 across the Atlantic and it was very comfortable. I think the seats are ever so slightly wider just because of the uh, long, the, the long haul com uh, configuration, uh, cabin configuration. It's a long old, it's a long old, uh, it's a long journey in it out to Anchorage, man. Yeah. 24 hours I've been door to door, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, so I went United, didn't I? Yeah, I think so. the airline chili that we talked about the other week just now the, the, up until sort of October time or something Condor that was it wasn't it yeah Condor flying direct was it direct to Anchorage out of Frankfurt yeah well if we're going to do it that's what we've got to do haven't we then oh oh really Oh, really? On the 339? Or 330, 333? Well, that'll be on the... Oh, interesting. Well, should we go... Should we look for that? Should we try that? Should we have a go at that? Oh. Yeah, why don't we, well, can't we fly out Condor and come back on uh, Eurowings? One way. It's an option, isn't it? Yeah. I'm Cloppy got the uh, key to the city today, didn't he? Ha ha! Oh, no, I thought you said something else. Cat's Grill does like the Air Canada livery. Uh, the new one, I'm guessing you're thinking about there, Gaz. Trash Panda. Or whatever. We were at the uh, Pride livery was coming in. Oh, nice Sri Lankan 330 from Cochin. Leipzig. I 
think Liège would be the better. But I've, uh, you know, who's running Liège now, don't you? The marketing guy who was doing um, the guy that was doing um, Cologne. Oh, what's his face? Yeah. What to to Liège? And of course, the big problem with it is, as, as well, that I saw was that there's nowhere to plane spot properly. It would have to be an airside project. Lewis Boy, you did just see a Air Canada 737. And like I said, what is interesting is that they're uh, remotely standing there and here's your Sri Lankan 330, very nice, look at this. Another trim powered jet. Ah, oh, nicely lined up, man. Nice little bit of adjustment there. Shame old RT's not flying the American 330s anymore. He wouldn't be because they're, they're not flying them anymore. But it is a shame that he's not. Oh, oh. Oh, we've got the uh, FedEx MD-11. And folks, by the way, also, just to give you a little bit of a heads up, we've been invited um, to cover the return of Emirates to Stansted um, on August the 1st. Um, just putting final um, stuff together with them. Uh, that's Emirates, a, uh, a 777 into Stansted. We will be airside for that project. Um, something to look forward to. Don't let me forget that MD-11, Jilly. Vintage engines Shropshire. Oh, vintage engine Shropshire. Love to come have a sniff round your uh, your workshops. I do like a vintage engine workshop. Must smell fantastic. And look and sound fantastic as well, I'm guessing. Oh, really? Okay, interesting. But we must. Uh, it, it. Nice passenger. Uh, Jack Van Dix, uh, not Sky Cargo. It'll be their passenger service. TCC. Um, yeah, gotcha. Oh, okay, I gotcha, yeah, yeah. Oh, M25 heading for Croydon, M25, oh then it's going to turn left, it's going to turn left then, yeah yeah well he's too high at the moment, he must be over above this cloud coverage I'd imagine, oh that's not, Oh yeah, yeah, 321, uh, Ben, we caught him, didn't we? And what, what, just to remind me what we did with him, Jilly, because I just, you know, I need to, you know, give some... Yes, I know. 
and he wanted us to uh, he wanted us to yeah yeah we got a Ben was it Captain Ben or you don't know if he's an SFO or is that it is that it is that it is that it sorry folks there she is Yeah, it's a longer route than normal. That's a longer route than normal. She's turning, she's turning now. Yeah. Clouds obscuring it a little bit. I guess she's, she, I'm guessing she's on descent, isn't she? KLM 737 becoming quite a rare aircraft these days to see at Heathrow now they're operating their Embraers quite quite regularly now Right on with those reverses, man. Oh, look at that. That's a quick turn, isn't it? That's a very quick turn. Emirates still operating the Sky Cargo 777 into Stansted. We're talking about the passengers, folks. The passenger service. Oh, need another bus, need another bus. Remember to uh, always be the last on the bus. <laughs> Jerry's tips on travel. Yeah, yeah, no, after you, oh no. No, 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 I've just remembered. Oh, I think I've left something on the plane. Hold on a minute. Get halfway up the steps, see everyone get on. I found it, I found it. Oh, no, there it is. Oh, silly me. <laughs> oh. I'm only going on what stands to the telling me, man, for God's sake. Is. Whoa, easy. Cool, that nearly got into an oscillation situation. Yeah. One more dip and right, and if his right hand gear had gone up, that would have become an oscillation. Or it 
could have got into oscillation. Oscillation. Oscillization. Probably won't be seeing Carl the astronomer for a little while now. He's probably the happiest bloke in the world to see those uh, pictures from the um, what was it? John's John something telescope. John. Cheers, John. No, he's got a name. He's got a name. Mike. John Howard. John Stevens. John Thomas. Johnny Fart Pants. Sorry. James Webb, that's it. I knew it was something like that. It's James, right? It's not John. Sorry, man, Dad. Oh, there's a little bit of activity underneath the uh, aeroplane there. What are we looking at here? Well, they're going to have to change wheels, that's for sure. Uh, when I say wheels, that'll be all the brakes will need to be. They probably burnt the brakes out, I'd imagine. Doesn't look like they had any deflated tires there. Or are they uh, wheeling away uh, wheels there? No, hold on a minute. Oh, no, no, that is, that, that is the wheel changing mechanism. Uh, so they've already done that by the looks of it. The geezer over there pumping them up. Shh, 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 shh. Hurry up, hurry up, John. Shh, shh, shh. I'm trying. Shh, 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 shh. Coming out the other side. Shh, 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 shh. He's obviously doing the bulks up, isn't he? Uh, but there's another one being changed out. There's another one, one wheeling him in. Speed it up, John. Shh, shh. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, look. That's a freighter jet, that, folks. A321 freighter. Embraer E195 E2 freighter is also uh, in production, I believe. That will be um, a Virgin operation, that will. That there plane there, that there will be there. Mike knocked to James Webb was the original Spider-Man. TCC, good question. Did United send a replacement plane? Well, it may be that they may have put some folks on another airline as well. Um, not quite sure what they've... Um, what they've done that's a that's a compressor i think that's a it's a ground generator isn't it that of course the tires will already be um pumped up to uh the right pressures around about 200 psi of nitrogen So I think that that will be, and that's the entire brake unit as well, folks. So they don't change, they don't take the, it's not the hub and the wheel, like you, the, sorry, the hub and the tyre, like you have, um, or, or the, the, the wheel assembly and the, um, sorry, the wheel assembly and the tyre, like you have on your car. This is the entire sort of like brake, hub, wheel and tyre combo assembly that they normally wheel out. Um, and then they can, sorry, they detach the, um, they detach the wheel and tyre assembly and then the brake assembly is a completely separate unit that, um, that they swap out. We had it done on our 767 with TUI when we flew out of Gatwick. Might get to see it there, we might get to see the brake assembly. Um, because I think, I mean, they, I, our ones arrived in a big plastic uh, container. So you might, has he still got his transponder on, has he?
Yeah, that's not good. Air India. There's a new brake assembly there, I think, isn't it? Hold on. No. I thought I saw something circular. I thought that's what they had there. So they wouldn't uh, do an RTO with, um, with hydraulic brake failure, would they? Surely not. I doubt they'd be able to at around about 140 knots. Surely they would then have to commit to flight. And then um, troubleshoot whilst they're in the air. And then um, they would have to uh, burn off the fuel and then bring it back. Um, and rely purely on reversers and uh, the, um, the ground spoilers to bring them to a stop if they had full hydraulic brake pack failure. Um, so I can't imagine that the hydraulic issue would be, bless you, would be related to the brakes. Can't think it would be. That's a wheel, that's a wheel and tyre assembly either coming off or going on, one of the two. He's coming out, look, he's coming out. He's coming out. All right, come on then, out you come. It's nice and shiny, isn't he? Yeah. That's why he didn't want to come out because he's just had a bath, isn't it? Matt Smith, 200 psi in the aircraft, dies equipment of being 450 feet underwater. Wow. That's pretty insane. Omar, poor passengers of Canada on the tarmac listen to Jerry's advice to do some bike last and now they have to queue up at the terminal bank. Well, yeah, but that's that's if you're... Oh, yes, right, I'm with you now, yes. Because there were more than one bus, more than two buses, yes. Omar, you're absolutely right. I completely ruined it for all those passengers, didn't I, Jilly? They all listened to me and were like, you know... Right, we're getting off last. No, 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 we're all right here, Nigel. Hold on, look. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be... You've got to time it right. Okay, don't get off last. <laughs> Let me just start that all over again. Don't get off last, yeah? Get off, but get off sort of like halfway through or three quarters of the way through disembarkation because then you'll figure out whether there's because you need to get off with the first bus. You need to be on the first bus. However, if you're at the back of the plane, that whole thing is completely blown out of the water, isn't it? Sometimes it works, sometimes it... If you're at the front of the plane-ish, if you're at the front-ish of the plane, then obviously you're gonna, um, you're gonna be in luck, I'd imagine. If you're at the back of the plane. Uh... 
So you literally tighten the bolts up there, look. Now he's using a jack system there, or he's lowering it down. Because what they do is they jack the undercarriage up. But that doesn't mean they lift the whole aircraft up. The hydraulic systems compress on themselves. Or actually, I think the undercarriage um, uh, axle system has uh, um, uh, an allowance to be able to jack everything up without everything else having to be jacked up, if you, if you know what I mean. So uh, I think what he's doing there is either lowering the, uh, the jacks now. And the other fella is doing up the, uh, is uh, talking. Is talking the uh, the mounting nuts. Ooh, nut sure. Keep an eye on that seven, eight, seven, just in case she makes she makes a big left turn Clyde or a right turn. Because at this time of the day, the light is getting pretty fantastic right now. Mike Noactor. The one that just went out. Oh, was it? Is that a triple? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's a triple, yeah. Sorry about that. Got a JFK, eh? So, I would imagine that they would be probably inspecting those brakes because uh, based on how aggressive that sounded, um, it certainly seems like they would have burnt through the material. Um, not so much the discs, but more so the, the pads themselves. Brand spanking new, didn't she? Uh, no, front undercarriage is uh, obscured. Oh, yeah. Whiskey Bravo. Whiskey Bravo. Foxtrot, is it? Oh, that's interesting. A crane has just uh, a low bed crane. That's not going to be uh, used in anything there, I don't think. So it may be that they're just swapping out those. Well, the, the, the issue may have already been dealt with uh, regarding the hydraulics issue. Uh, bless you. Uh, and therefore, this is the final part of what they're needing to do is to swap out the um the wheels of course it's all wheel braking on the 767 um so rather than sort of like you know those those brake units will go off to uh, um, um, a maintenance center which will then um of course giving out a proper old whack isn't he we'll go off to a maintenance center and be uh, worked on there and overhauled as well.
Look at that big Korean triple lining up, look. Beautiful, man. Love shots like that. Love it. Peter Graham, that Titan 321 freighter that we saw. Two round trips to Brussels today, wow. Virgin Atlantic Cargo, very, very busy in their cargo operations still. Ken Alloway, what's the equivalent of kicking tyres in the aviation world? Well, you try and kick these tyres, you need some uh, steel toe cap boots on, that's for sure. Otherwise, you're going to break your toes. It's like kicking steel. Interesting, something I, I also learnt, I think it was possibly earlier on this year, was the fact that 99.9%, .9%, in fact, all of aircraft replacement uh, tyres unless they reach their end of life, which I don't know exactly what that is, but they're all remolds. There are companies that do it. Oh, wow, look at that shot. Such a graceful shot, and yet those GE 90s are growling away on the climb out. Can't help but keep being nosy. I just want to see if uh, I think they've done all the tyre replacement, uh, wheel replacement. Oh, there we go. There's the uh, left side rear going on, or is it left side front, I think, going on there. I don't know, I think maybe... Uh, depending on the aircraft type and manufacturer that the uh, I think the um, I think all aircraft brake assemblies are completely removable as one single unit it's not like your uh, your caliper system on your car um, works under the same principle don't get me wrong but it's a circular um, setup with multiple, like six or eight, uh, hydraulic rams that then push the pistons, that then push the um, the discs together, which are kind of like large um, brake pads, so to speak. So, and on each wheel, there can be up to uh, four to six systems on each assembly. 
So you can imagine how many, uh, how the, the braking power of these things. Yeah, I think he's taking that rear one off. Is that rear one coming off? No, need to pump it up a little bit more, son. Debbie Speller, Cargo Lux overhead, GP. Cargo Lux overhead. Not seeing it. Oh my God, Cockshafer's overhead though. Oh, that's not good. Oh uh, yes, we do have. Oh. Uh, oh, is it? What's that? What, inbound? Oh my God. Oh dear. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, that's not good, man. So Toronto going through it then as well, man. Every airport in the world's going through it, man. That's crazy. Uh, Dave Ulberg, they will uh, the, the hydraulic systems will um, uh, 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 prime themselves, and then uh, they will do a they will run a test. They may do a short taxi test ch brake test. Um, obviously, the onboard systems will let them know that the uh, that the that the hydraulic systems are primed and everything like that. Um, but there's nothing better than a physical check, obviously, which they will carry out. But again, like I said, I'm I'm not convinced that it was a brake-related hydraulic failure. Um, that uh, that caused the RTO, because had it been that, um, would they have rejected the takeoff after over 80 knots? Would they have done that? Can any pilot out there confirm what the procedure is and whether or not they would reject um, the takeoff? based on a uh, hydraulic brake hydraulics failure yeah Russell in Japan he's our man isn't he he's our man yeah yeah if you hear hear us talking about it on the stream later Russell uh, write to us and let us know Always appreciate your input, mate. And any other 767 driver. But then I think it might apply to any aircraft of that size and type. You know, A330 or, you know, whatever it might be. Pardon me. Might even apply to the uh, the smaller, smaller aircraft as well. Although I would imagine that it would be a... Um, different in terms of the speeds and that sort of stuff. A few more months and we'll be seeing big plumes of um, mist coming up over those wings, man. 
big long ribbons coming off the wingtips, especially on the 330s. Ah oh, man, she's climbing in some beautiful cloud there. Yeah, 145 knots is a very high speed. I mean, you know, rotate speed on it in a, the 767 is what? 140 to 160? Yeah. And at 140 knots, she's probably, I'd say, two thirds of the runway. Brakes locked up. Well, the brakes would have locked based on the input from the. Uh... No, beyond 80 knots, it's interesting to see that there's an RTO beyond uh, 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 beyond 80 knots. And I'm very surprised to see a, an RTO at 145 knots as well. That's very fast. And that's a long way into the takeoff roll as well. Oh, is this the Air Canada triple? It's like 12 hours late or something. Although now is another 40 minutes sitting on the bleeding tarmac, waiting for the gate to open. This is always the very awkward moment when. Uh, the uh, person allotted the uh, to give the announcement. Hi everybody and uh, welcome to London Heathrow. Weather time is currently 10 minutes past nine in the evening. Um, really, really sorry for, uh, you know, it's, it's not their fault mate, at the end of the day it's not their fault. 12 hours is a long delay though, isn't it? Eh? It's a long delay, man. Beautiful clouds, man. Beautiful clouds. Where's he going? Cincinnati. Good guess. Yes, yeah, about the announcement. Jim. Beautiful clouds, man. Look at that. Beautiful clouds. Yeah, I said that about 30 minutes ago. It's about 6,000 down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But 4,000 a day is a lot though, isn't it, still? Squeezy jet.
<laughs> Never heard that one before. Russ CT incoming American 787-9 from Chicago. Well, I've never heard that the way it described like that before. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in the, mor in the morning. Isn't it shepherd's warning or something? Sailor's warning? No, I've never heard that one. Warning of what? Red sky in the morning, sailor's more, sailor's warning. Uh oh, uh oh. Cockshafer alert. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, 58 years old, that's the first time I've ever heard it. I apologize. Look it up, folks. It is Sailor's Warning, Red Sky and Tip Morning. Sailor's warning. Never heard that in my life. All I ever heard was red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Yeah, red sky at night, barns on fire. <laughs> That's funny, man. Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Red sky at night. Oh, shit, I left the iron on. Left the iron on. Scooby's got it right. <coughs> oh, that was a little bit harsh. Oh, I felt that. Oh, I felt that one. Mm. I think that, I think that little cart that they've got there was housing, possibly housing the uh, the brake units themselves that little trailer they got there kind of looks a little bit odd that those wheels I oh, know they don't it's just the light in it say they did come on hurry up and get to the gate let's get these people off this flipping aeroplane Look at that. Thumbnail that, GP. Yeah. Oh, is there? Yeah, no, it's just a bigger moon, isn't it? Oh. Wow, well, what was that? Private jet going in farm, bro. Say, bear dead. Embraer Legacy. How absolutely wonderful. It's nice and clean.
always tell an A350 also another little giveaway folks is those little whiskers on the side she's the whiskers on the older A350 1000s you had three little whiskers on the uh, on the uh, above the nose as well but they took all those instruments and and put them inside the aircraft so they're no longer required them. Al Disney is back. Welcome back, Al. Dreamliner lined up right there is going to Delhi. Quite a nice dramatic bank shot from them. Well, a cleaning solution, really. They'll use cleaning solution on the outside of the aircraft. Much like what you clean your car with, really, I'm guessing, you know, get the grime off. Wet it first, then uh, get the soap and suds going and then uh, jet wash it. It's always good to uh, pre-wet anything that you're, dry, uh, that you're washing, because otherwise if you go straight on with the with you know with the cleaning compound or anything or, or, or with the with the sponge you could uh, the grit could get caught up in that dirt and uh, scratch the surface well I would always recommend that for your um, for your posh car anyway not for my van I think it was the uh, Terminal 2 roof that we saw the other day, wasn't it? Yeah, that multi, uh, multi-coloured lights on it. Mind that? So that could be a hydraulics test with those uh, ground spoilers being up like that.
engine cowls up as well. It's going through a pretty uh, extensive test by the looks of it. Engine cowl going up on that number one there, look. I think that's just been lifted in it. Oh no, no, he's in there. Visual inspection possibly, or uh, maybe a replacement part going in there. I could watch that kind of stuff going on all night, mate. <laughs> to be honest with you. Oh. We have another bit. Oh, look. That what? That. Uh, didn't it remind, didn't it arrive earlier? Well, when I was off air, one of those arrived. A Eurowings unmarked. Maybe he's, uh, I don't know, let's just have a look at the reg. No reg, uh, it's got uniform right at the end of it. I'm sh sure it arrived earlier though, man. I'm sure, I mean, I definitely caught one of those there. I don't know how many they're operating with uh, just the Eurowings. Um, it might well be, he might, he might be right. The other one's probably parked up at the other end of T2. Uh, whereas that one's sitting on remote for whatever reason, blah, blah, blah. Kevin Beasley, yes. Well, I, I, I think um, I think there probably will be plans to do that in terms of putting um, solar solar paneling uh, on terminal roofs. Of course, it would make a massive difference, wouldn't it? Um, where was it I saw the other day that uh, had solar panels? I think it was an airport, I'm pretty sure it was an airport that I flew over anyway. Makes perfect sense to do it, doesn't it? Right. Web76, what are your thoughts about Doncaster, Sheffield possibly closing due to Wizz Air pulling out? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think there's two elements to it, uh, Web, and that is that obviously um, a, uh, a bid has been made by a, um, a development company, uh, housing development, and, um, you know, there's a, there's every chance that you know, if the uh, if the airfield's not making the kind of money that it needs to make to stay operational, and you've got um, a company waiting in the sidelines offering housing and probably affordable at that, uh, the local council will probably have to put everything on the table and look at the best option really for the airport. Of course, it would be a travesty, wouldn't it? Because the Vulcan is there. I think what we should do now, if we can, is um, start preempting that happening, yeah, and um, possibly arranging for the Vulcan to be transported. Um, the only problem with it would be would be uh, it would have to go to an air, it would have to go to static display, wouldn't it? I can't think that it would go to an airfield because they're oh, easy, son. Easy. You stay that side of the glass, mate. Oh, sod off. Right, Jilly. Oh, mate. Oh, they're here, they're here, they're here. Right, they're here, they're here, they're here, they're here, they're here, they're here. Jilly, they're here. Jilly, they're here. Right, folks. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, yeah, let, let's do this. Let's just quickly do this, okay. <laughs> right, folks.
Okay, just very, very quickly, because these guys, they, 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 they don't like me and I don't like them. Um, although they're completely harmless, let's be honest, yeah. Um, so on, um, on Saturday, write this down. Get a pen, quickly, hurry up and go and get a pen. Or open up your phone to notes. You ready? <laughs> okay, Saturday, we're gonna be, this is the plan as it stands at the moment. Saturday, we're gonna be at Farnborough for a, a walk through, a pit walk um, through all the static displays. Um, some of the vendors that are gonna be there as well, talk about what's going on in their world, so to speak. Um, also, uh, to catch, uh, to look at static displays, 777 or the 7779. Uh, uh, the 73710, um, as well as any other static displays that might be on the ground at the time. We're going to do a walkthrough um, and uh, obviously do a very up close and personal uh, look at that uh, 779 um, and its unbelievable engines. Wait till you see the fan blades of that of those uh, Gen X engines. Uh, GE. Um, Because Gen X is the uh, opposite, the, the, the equivalent of the uh, of the um, uh, Trent 1000, isn't it? It's the GE. Is it just the GE X? Is it? Oh, I can't see it. Can't hear it. Um, Going where? Going where? Which direction? Oh, flipping heck. Yes, 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 I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's going to be a difficult one, man, because it's right against the... Oh, for flipping X sake. Don't know if it's in... I can hear it now. Did you say it's the AN12, yeah? Oh, AN26. Oh man, this is difficult. This is difficult. It's because it goes out of focus every time I bleed in. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, I nearly had it. I nearly had it. Wow, that's an old aeroplane, man. That's a very old aeroplane. Yeah. Now that's the kind of aircraft that could potentially be used for, uh, for uh, AOG uh, aircraft on ground, uh, parts replacements, etc. Right, okay, uh, let me carry on with what I was saying. Okay, no disruptions, please, Jelly, thank you. Um, <laughs> Flipping heck, man. Um, so, Saturday, going to be at Farnborough um, for the walkthroughs and all that kind of stuff. reason we're doing it on Saturday is because it's something to do on the Saturday for the Saturday show, but also to give you an intro into what's coming up at Farnborough the following week. Next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we've got flying displays. Um, and that is what I'm dedicating uh, Big Jet TV to all of next week. So uh, if you don't manage to catch it on the Monday, catch it on the Tuesday. If you missed, uh, when, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way through. Um, kind of the same sort of like displays 
uh, each day, but sometimes adding a little bit more, uh, maybe a different fly pass. Got the Spitfire doing a, doing a display, I believe, on the Friday. Uh, Red Arrow's going to be flying past um, on, on every day, more or less, I think. Uh, you've got the A350, of course, Monday and Tuesday, folks. You've got you to tune in. Just download the app. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel right now. Don't delay because you're going to get to see the 777X display at Farnborough right in front of your eyes. And not only that, we have got exclusive uh, access to those aircraft. So we will possibly on one of the days be on stand with that aircraft as it winds up those big uh, General Electrics. Um, that's what I was talking about before we looked at that bleeding aircraft, wasn't it? It was the GENX. The Gen X is what powers the. Um... No, no, Gen X is the GENX is the is the seven eight seven power plant. GE9X, apologies, the GE9, you didn't, you said GENX, Jilly, GE9X. GE9X, of course, sorry folks, um, but yes, uh, so I will be right there in front of this thing as it winds up. We'll go on board the, the aircraft, have a look inside the flight deck as much as what we can, obviously, although I can't think it's gonna be that much different than a triple seven flight deck to be perfectly honest with you um it's uh it's all about other stuff on that beautiful big airplane but um we've got all of that to come next week folks so make sure you tune in this saturday we will put out notifications as for timings on the screen um uh, on saturday morning uh, but just be aware that we could come on at any time so uh, obviously not at eight o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock it's highly unlikely to be any time before you know between 11 and midday something like that and then we'll have a walk right the way through the thing like i said earlier on i do have a uh, i've hired a scooter as well so we're going to have scooter cam um as we uh, as we make our way through uh and down to the different areas um going to be using that on every day next week as well but um we should have a great day on Saturday and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday we've got air displays uh, throughout the week. It's uh, normally starting no earlier than midday, I believe, um, so it kind of kind of works for, uh, for our friends out in the West, not so brilliantly for our, for our friends out in the East, but uh, hey, we'll try our best. But uh, so keep an eye on the app, make sure you leave your notifications on and also download uh, the, um, or sorry, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, folks. Very important that you do that because we don't want you to miss out on anything that's coming up. So that's about it. Thank you very much for, um, let's just get this 380 uh, rotating, shall we? Hold on a second. Cockshafe is all over the gaff. Or dune bugs. Do we call them June bugs? May bug, that's it, yeah. That's it, yeah. A bit late for May bugs, though, aren't they? Left turn, Clyde. Yeah, I'm like. 
Christmas tree, isn't he, look? One three eighty, two three eighties. Yeah, it's the GE nine X in it. It's the Gen X, G-E-N-X on the uh, 787. The GE9X is the uh, power plant on the uh, triple, on the 779. And that's what Boeing are calling it, the 779. Not the 777X as, uh, as we've been calling it for quite some time, but under their, their website and their branding and all that, they're... Uh, they're giving it the uh, name, the 779, which is pretty cool. Okay, folks, so don't forget, Saturday at Farnborough, come and have a live pit walk with me. And um, there may be some aircraft, still some aircraft arriving, some of the static aircraft arriving on the Saturday, because it's not a public day. It's not even open on that day. Uh, it officially opens on Monday. Um, so we will get to be exclusively um, We'll get access exclusively around the airfield and also uh, to catch any aircraft movements and also to have a look at what's going on. I'll show you where we're going to be positioned, etc, etc. And uh, then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we will be live with um, air displays from the airfield. So until then, look after yourselves. Be safe, be happy, be good, and um, stay tuned as well because there may be updates, folks. There are, these guys are making changes literally on a minute by minute basis. At, um, doesn't it make you sad when you see the, uh, the notch that was for the jumbo? When you see that, I mean, you still would have to notch it out for the, uh, for the A350, 330 Dreamliner, etc. But not so excessively it's the only thing left in it it's the only thing left oh well there we go all right folks look after yourselves be good be happy be good to the animals as well be safe and do everything responsibly take care see you later bye bye